we use the labeling uh, labeling function we just mentioned to show this information from which to which and then we counted the number of lengths and really counted more than 500 lengths which is pretty cool okay and we define the entries and exits of the North Campus and we added stop signs luckily within this area we don't have any traffic light so we only add stop signs at intersections and we coded the transit system three lines, three buses I mean three bus lines okay, using a uh, transit program the next one I'm going to talk about is combined data so you have data, but they may be sparsely located on different data sets. And you want to combine them. The formal word is called joining. Joining. So what is join? Jo table join is between two tables. And if the join is based on a specific, specified key, which is a field in the table. Another way is spatial join. It's between two feature layers or two vector layers, and it's based on their spatial, uh, spatial relationship. Now, I want to emphasize, the result of join will contain information from both data sets. I mean, for e each record, the result will contain information from both data sets. If some field is not existed, it will be empty or not, okay? Now, here are types of joins. The most frequent one we are using is called inner join, which is this one. So here are two data sets. If a record exists exists in both two data sets, I mean by its, by its key, if the key exists in both data sets, the result is called inner join. The most frequent, we use more frequently. Another one is called outer join, which means no matter in all records, will exist in the final result. Okay? These are two joints we use more, most frequently. I think some of you have already encountered these questions. How can I combine the tables? So use all, either inner join or outer join. And there are some other joints you can use. Different types of joints. Okay? And we can do spatial join in ArcGIS desktop. Let me demonstrate that very quickly. Now we're talking about two layers. One layer is zones. These are zones. And the other, the other layer is called zone centroids. Now, if we open the attribute table of, zone, of this layer, we see it only has X and Y information. But this layer has some other information we need, which is the time. So we want to add a time to that layer. Then we right click on this and go to joins and relates and go to join. And here I can choose two things. Either join attributes from a table, which is a table join I just introduced, or join data from another layer based on spatial location. This is spatial join. Okay? This, this is spatial join. And I want to spatial join to another layer called the zones. And in this way, we are joining polygons to points. And in the poly, each point, if it's within the polygon, then they are considered as matched. And OK. After doing this, there will be a new layer called join output. And right click that, we are going to see time. All, attri attri all attributes from the other layer have been added to this layer. For example, this type information we need. Okay? And by using that functionality, most of you have already used that. It only provides part of the GIS uh, joining functionality. Actually, for each type of target and each type of join features, there are a lot of uh, relationships we can use, like intersect, intersection, 
containing or is within. But you are not going to see it from the menu. So I wanted to show you how to be professional here. Here is a command window. You go to command window by clicking here. Then you will be able to put a command line. There is, you can do it as in uh, the command window of the windows. Like, so let me put on command here. Spatial, spatial join. Spatial join. Then from which network? From this layer to this layer. You see, these things are automatically coming up. Then output feature layers, maybe drive D slash data set, output, but as HP. Then we can choose the join operation, with join type, field mapping, I just use uh, two quotes to indicate no input. And match option, I can choose. Here I can choose closest intercept or is within, okay? And radius, search radius. Just I just use empty. I just empty. Uh, a locator with this name doesn't exist, which means this happens when the output data set is not correctly specified. Let me do it again. Features point zooms d drive d slash one dot shp. Okay, so it's executed. Then we are going to see the result here. Okay, I just created it. So by doing this, you are appearing to more professional. And sometimes <laughs> you can do more things. The sixth task is about print data. Print data is, so this is a view called a data view. If you go to view and layout view, you're going to see how it's printed on a paper, on a piece of paper. And you can also do it by a button here. You can switch to da uh, data view, you can switch to layout view. So they are different. And you may want to add a background. Okay? And you can insert a lot of things here, like a neat line. You may want to insert a legend. By inserting a legend, here is a very important thing for the background, because sometimes you are not going to see um, your legend because it's by default transparent. So if you select a very light background, you are going to see better. And just default value. See, this is a legend. And you may not want to use all of them, so you go to properties and remove them. For example, if you select these things and click that, you are going to get a cleaner version of legend. Okay? And you can insert scale bar. This scale bar, you can insert um, a title or the north arrow. So it looks better. Another thing I want to introduce is the transparency. So you see this very dark background, and you want to make it look better. So you just directly on this group I just created. Go to properties, display, and you add some transparency to it, like 70% transparency. In this way, you are going to see it much better, okay? The next function you will only see in this layout view is export map. If you go to data view, data, data view, you won't see it. Oh, you still see it? Okay. Sorry, sorry. So you can see it in both views. So you go to file, export map, you can export your map into any data format you want. Okay? Like PDF or PMP. So that's for printing. Now it's analyzed data. Uh, it's for calculating shortest paths and cost metrics and point densities. I have 10 minutes left. What about I just go to What about I just talk about homework first, then I go back. So if you want to leave, it's feel free to leave, okay? So today's homework is you I want you to read this file. Which is ArcGIS extensions. It has only twenty pages and
contains a lot of figures, so it's not very difficult to read. First thing is to read this file, and I have already provided this on UbiLearns. Then I want you to browse the help file, help systems of ArcGIS for detailed help, help of these extensions. And Jim, could you help me shut uh, close the door? <laughs> and please focus on these two sections. And if you don't have ArcGIS right now, you can access this domain name, uh, this domain, uh, access this website. There is an on, uh, online version. And the task is to imagine how these extensions may be applied to traffic simulation and write down your most exciting ideas. But don't give me more than three ideas. Let me give you some example. First thing you are going to see is dissolve. Dissolve means you have a lot of fragmented features. And if they are sharing the same attributes, they, will, they can be merged by this dissolving method. How can this be used? In some network you are getting, there are a lot of short links connecting. Okay, So you want to merge them into a long link because they have the same attribute. That's how you use dissolve. Okay, this is an example. Another example is integration. You have one layer like this, the other layer like that. That's typically caused by different by the problem in uh, cartography. So by using integration, you can merge two layers, two features into one feature. How can this be used? So if you get two networks and they have different attributes, uh, diff uh, have, they both have attributes you need, and they are not perfectly matched, you can use integration to get uh, output. Right? So these are, are two examples I provided. Don't use them, and use your own examples. Now it's 4.44, and I have some most important things to talk about. We can postpone that to the next class, and we can, or we can talk about them today. Mm. Which, which way is better? Postpone them. Okay, so <laughs> I will just postpone them. Yeah. So here are two things I haven't talked about, but it doesn't, uh, I, won't, I don't think it will cause you trouble for the homework. For the homework, uh, some of you have not submitted your homework yet. And I'm going to talk about that on Thursday. So please submit that before Thursday. Because after, after Thursday, if you still submit that, it will be perfect. Because I'm going to talk about that on Thursday. Another problem is some of you have very similar answers. So let's make it clear. If you, two of you are having the same un similar answers, uh, I'm not meaning that you're copying each other, but you have similar ideas. So there will be only one person giving, uh, to be given novelty. For example, this time, uh, some people are having this similar answers with Patrick. So, but Patrick is the first one that proposed his idea on, uh, I mean, in the last lecture. So novelty will only be given to you. And next time, if two people are using the same ideas and they appear very sim uh, they appear identical, both of them lose the point of novelty. Okay, so I think it's fair. So don't try to use other people's ideas. So any questions? So I will postpone that two tasks to the next lecture, and now it's the end of this lecture. Do you have any questions? So are you discouraging a group work or not? I mean, for the homework. So. Can two work together on the homework? Uh, all the homework are individual homework. So you're, you're discouraging? I'm discouraging homework. Because I want you to use your brain. 